Greetings traders, Robert from North Star Day Trading here. In this video, we will be showing you how to add custom strategies or automated trading strategies, automated trading bots, whatever you wish to call them, into the Quant Tower platform. Uh, don't worry about the layout. This is just a chart setup that I use. A couple charts up here, higher time frame down the bottom. I see my positions and orders here. And this is what we'll be focusing on, the strategies manager. You can actually find that under the AMP, uh, I'm an AMP here, but under the, the logo at the top, I just happen to use the um, uh, AMP Futures version, but the regular Quantile version is the, the same way. Uh, and then you come down here to where your trading is. You can see here the strategies manager. That's what we'll focus on. I actually made it a favorite. So this is it right here already on the chart, but notice if I click on it, it just pulls up another version. Uh, if I add a strategy here, it will populate here as well. So I guess we could use this for an example. So first thing is first is all of the North Star day trading strategies, uh, automated trading systems and indicators are included with Discord. So just become a member of our Discord group and you get everything we have, strategies, indicators and bots on any platform that we have development for. First thing is once you uh, wish to have the Quant Tower strategy. Uh, it is licensed, so I need to modify the file and send you your own DLL file. It is a single file uh, that it contains the actual strategy. And what we need to do with that, I'm going to move my other window here, is we need to put it in a specific area so it will be recognized by the Quant Tower platform. Now this is where I have mine installed. It's my local PC. I have a folder called AMP Quant Tower, and that was my installation directory during the installation process. The default location, I believe, believe it or not, is I believe downloads. So once you download it and you extract it, it's going to start to install it right in the downloads folder. That's not really the greatest uh, place to put it. So once you get it downloaded and extracted, you want to run the installation file and put it in your new folder. I have two. This is the AMP version for Quant Tower. Uh, it uses a CQG connection. And then I have the standard version of Quant Tower, which is the generic, and I can choose uh, multiple brokers, multiple connections with that one. So I'll be focusing on this. This is just because it's my uh, my main system. The directory is under the, your install directory, AMP Quant Tower, or Quant Tower, wherever you put it, uh, under the settings folder. Let's just go here under the settings, and we have scripts right here, and then we have strategies. You just copy the DLL file regardless of, of which one you have here, uh, into this area. Now let's just go and take the fair value gap um, fills strategy, for example. Now let's assume we we're going to be working with this one. So I copy it in my strategies folder, and then it will show up when I click this plus to add a strategy to my chart. Uh, and here is fair value gap fills right there. I simply I double click on it. It's going to add it, and like I said before, it shows it down here as well as here, uh, just because it's the same. It's the same module. Now, with strategies in Quant Tower, they are independent of the chart. So if I clicked on Run right now, it's going to run that strategy based on these settings. It doesn't matter which chart I'm looking at. So you can see up here, I'm looking at a 30 tick range bar chart, and here's a three minute chart. Uh, if my settings were on a 10 minute chart this strategy will apply to a 10 minute time frame. Uh, it's very, very important that this is done correctly. Once we add our strategy to uh, our strategies manager, definitely want to make sure we go into our settings and this is where we uh, have everything set up uh, correctly. So here's my symbol. Okay. Now notice right here, uh, I have, I can collapse this, but I can do a search and I want to run it on MNQ. So I'm just going to start typing MNQ and we can see this is the one I want. It's the futures MNQ, con MNQ contract. The U contract is for the September month, uh, today being August 19th, 2023. So I'm going to just select that and notice it shows me here with AMP CQG. It matches my data. This is uh, where I'll be pulling my symbol and data from. And which account do I want it on? I only have one account right now. This is my live account. Uh, this is going to be important as a future video will show how to run this through market replay. And that is very important because when we choose our symbol, we won't be choosing AMP CQG. We'll be choosing our market replay. And when we choose our account, there'll be a second one underneath this that says market replay. This is very important. So now I know that I'm using this strategy, this version of the strategy. Uh, on my AMP CQG data connection and on my 
actual account, so I know this is my live account. I can specify the number of contracts, <coughs> excuse me, that I want per trade. And this value here relates to the minute, relates to building from. So I'm going to choose a one minute chart. Notice if I choose one minute, it's going to look weird uh, with this three minute chart as it starts plotting. Say, wait a minute, why did it plot a trade there? Why did it take a trade there? So I need to make sure that I'm, if I'm using a chart along with it to monitor, then I want to make sure that it matches. And here's just the minimum uh, size of these these gaps. Because this is a, a fair value gap fills strategy, uh, it operates a little differently than the regular fair value gap. So typically, without going into too much detail, if the market gaps down, you wait for the market to come up and then you, re, you enter a short for it to continue on. Uh, however, I've noticed that if the gaps are small, which we can specify in these two areas, uh, then it is, you are better off trading through that gap. Uh, <clears throat> here's a coincidence where we have a, from here to here, we have the low of this one and a high of this one, two candles later, right? So here's a gap between the high and the low of uh, candle one, two, and three. Notice the market came back up. It came in between that area right here and then continued this direction. So that would be a pretty good uh, classic fair value gap. Now, this is pretty large. This is going from 65 or so uh, to 80. So we have 15 points here. Now, that's really, that's kind of a, the maximum amount uh, that I would take. Uh, for a reversal. Uh, if it's smaller than that, I would like to trade through that gap. Just kind of a little function that I found uh, on, on my own that seems to work out pretty well. I'll give you an example of this one right here. We have a high here and a low here. All right, candle one, two, and three. The gap is between the high of one and the low of three, or the other way around if you're going difference, right? We have a, a low here and a high here. So this is a little gap. So with the high of this one and the low of this one is not very big. I'm looking on the right, 739 roughly to 744. Um, so we have about a five point gap there. Perfect. And you can see what happened once this high was breached here, it continued through to close that gap. That's what we want to do on this side. So notice we have uh, <clears throat> minimum gap size in ticks. So we'll be looking for gaps. I'm going to go to two points. This is going to be an eight tick gap, which would be two points. Okay, so if it's between two and let's say 10, or 40 ticks. So this is going to look at a gap anywhere between two and 10 ticks. Let's say that we're at, uh, I'm assuming, uh, uh, two and 10 points. So let's say we're at 10 points. Our gap is exactly 10 points. Well, where's our stop going to be? Our stop is going to be one and a half times the size of that gap. That's the, by default. Uh, the reason that we do this is we need some more room. Uh, to trade. So as this market came up, it may push up to this area and just may retrace some, but we want to make sure that we don't just enter and go the other direction and get stopped out only for it to continue through. Okay, um, so that's something we need to look at. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have our um, settings set for, for instance here, we can just go back and click on run. And when I click and run, it shows me that my license is valid, shows me my start time, when it started, and this is giving me on this side all the information. The market's not open right now, so we're not going to get any type of movement or any type of data in here, but we do know that it is working. I have a valid license. I have this here, and the clock is running. So let me stop this momentarily. Now, what we can do additionally, uh, let me move this off to the side, is we can add the fair value gap indicator to the same chart so we can actually see where these gaps are. Now remember in these settings, we chose a minimum of eight and a maximum of 40. Okay, so let's go and add the fair value gap indicator to this chart, fair value gap. There's another video of how to add indicators to the charts so or how to import them. So I, I encourage you to go back in the, the channel and look for those. So here, what we have, we have uh, the same, we have our eight and 40. This is per the indicator, okay? So we can see the same settings from the indicator to the strategy. So now we can look at the chart and we'll actually be able to see those gaps that the strategy would have been taken or, or will take the ones coming up in the future. So let's turn this on and we can see that they are, <clears throat> okay? There are the 
uh, the gaps that we were speaking of earlier. Uh, notice this one right here. See this one missing from here to here because this is larger than our maximum size. So let's increase this. Let's make this 80. And we see the gap now, okay? Because it went from here to here. So we have a larger gap. And as we can see, when we have these large gaps, the, it tends to fill the gap here into it and then go the other direction. Whereas when we have these smaller gaps, like this between two and 10, they tend to go right through. So here's a gap that was plotted between here and the low of this and the high of this, and the candle went right through it. Now this may have gone down and retraced a bit, okay? This is a three minute chart. This may have gone down and retraced some, which is why in our strategy, if you recall, we had our stop multiplier of one and a half. So in a 10 point gap, if it was at a 10 point gap, it's gonna be a 15 point stop. We can see now uh, on these also that once the gap is closed, uh, it, it stops plotting on this particular indicator. So we know that this was cleared. We know that this green one was cleared. It wasn't entered here. It was cleared right here. Um, this red one here is a gap up. So we have a low here and a high here. There's the gap between them, plots this, right through it, right through here, right through here. Uh, and that seems to be pretty standard. Uh, you get these gaps that are small. They just they just go right through pretty much for the, for the most part and fill them out. Uh, this one is still waiting, pending, and we're just waiting and waiting. So if the strategy were running, we would have an order sitting here. We would have a short here, a target here, and our stop would be uh, above it one and a half times the size of the gap, which is configurable. You can make this two times if you want, uh, or one if you want a one to one ratio that way. However, this is, is not really a ratio play. Uh, we just want to leave enough room for the movement of the market before we play through these gaps. Um, hopefully that will answer some questions on how to add the strategy to the chart. Uh, next time I'll be going through on another video for the, uh, the, the market replay uh, and how we can pull some back testing and look at those results. Uh, trade well and let me know if you have any questions.